I'm sure you've been doing an Unreal Engine tutorial and you've broken apart a hit result not knowing what any of the other ones do. Well, in today's video, I'm going to change that. I'm going to show you guys each of the individual hit result options and what they do and explain a little bit about each of them. My goal at the end of this video is to make sure that you have enough knowledge uh, to make some great things happen with the hit results. Lots of possibilities available. And if you're new to the channel, my name's Take Grace. I make Unreal Engine tutorials and videos just like this. So if you want to become a better game dev, hit subscribe, join the community and join the discord. Lots of game devs that want to become better just like you. All right, let's break on into this video. All right, let's get started on the hit result here thing. Uh, let's just uh, look at this here. This is what the hit result will be. Uh, we'll be referencing pretty uh, all of these in here. Um, I've added in a pen node so that we can add in, we'll just learn about the first one, the hit actor. Uh, so that's what actor in the world that you're hitting. Okay, so very useful to be uh, print stringing this. We know exactly what actor to hit, and then we're going to plug in the ones that we're looking at. Okay, so you'll see that I'm tracing on the camera channel, and this is a hit result. We'll get into that in a second here. Okay, so uh, we're going to go up here. So we're going to um, interact with this block with our line trace. You'll see it says cube true up in the corner there. Okay, and um, if I uh, come over here and hit F again, it's going to say floor true. So what's going on right now is this is a blocking hit. So it's going to return true if the um, item that it's hitting is indeed stopping the line trace and uh, making it a hit. Easiest way to explain that is uh, this return value right here. Very, very often, actually pretty much almost every time you're going to drag out of here and get a branch. This return value is a blocking hit. So you're only going to run this code if we hit something. Okay, so if we don't hit anything, we're not going to run any code or do anything in that regard. Okay, so this branch uh, pretty much is always here just because we don't want to run stuff uh, outside the line trace unless you mean to, obviously. Okay, so, but otherwise, uh, this just means that we are hitting something, okay? And the way we know we're hitting something is inside uh, any of the actors. Um, if you scroll down to, like, the first person mesh, for example. Uh, all the collision settings. Anything that's set to block can be a blocking hit when you are hitting it, okay? Overlap is a different story. So, this right here has nothing to do with overlap. This is only for hit results. If you want anything to do with overlapping, um, that is a totally separate node. So this cube, for example, if we right click this uh, cube, go add event, and then on component begin overlap, that is going to generate events if our collision sphere for our player or whatever you're doing overlaps with this particular cube. Then it's gonna start running some code uh, off of this event right here. Okay, and then this is going to generate a different thing, so we'll break it result. It's going to be exactly the same, but this is going to be an overlap, okay? So that's the difference, and the it's the exact same premise here with the collision settings. If it's set to overlap, we can do overlap component, uh, pardon me, overlap events, as long as we have um, simulation generate, where well, we have hit events, and then we have overlap events. So if we have to have one of those checked in order for it to work. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, so just make sure you're paying attention to that. Okay, uh, the next one on the list here, this one, I, I'm not going to lie to you, this one has not ever gone true for me in any case that I've used. Okay, if you roll over it, it just says, um, a true, is hit, uh, true if the hit started in initial overlap. In this case, some other value should be interpreted differently. But once again, I've uh, been standing inside collisions. I've been overlapping collisions. I've been doing a whole bunch of different stuff. Cannot get this to go true. So uh, if you know what initial overlap does, that would be super awesome. To, uh, let me know in the comments down below. So next up we have time. So we're just gonna delete this and we are gonna plug time into here. So this time is not the time in the engine that we've hit it. This is the time it took to hit the end of our range of our line trace. So I'm gonna walk all the way up here. So we got these guys here. Okay, so my line trace, we've told it to draw 5,000 Unreal Engine units for the line trace. Okay, so um, we have three cubes here. This one is obviously 500 and we have 2,500 and 5,000. Okay, so the time is going to be based on um, how far along your total range of the line trace that this is. Okay, so if I hit this 500, it should be 0.1 seconds because it's only a 10% 10, 10 of the way down the line trace. So we'll hit it. Um, it says 0 0.1, 0 0.1, blah, 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 blah. I'm standing a little bit too close, but obviously uh, it's still 0.1. Okay, so if I hit the uh, 2500, you can see that it says uh, 0.5 because it's halfway down. And if I hit the 5000, four, there we go, cube, and it's just under one. So in a sense, it's not really time. Uh, the better way to think about this is alpha, right? So um, if you're going to be getting a lerp, for example, um, it's going to ask for an alpha, which is between a number between zero and one. Um, and you could use this if you wanted uh, to generate uh, some sort of alpha between the two um, values. Okay, so um, yeah, it'll say uh, it says time is an impact along a trace direction ranging from zero to one. 
Okay, if there's a hit, indicating time will between start and end equals one if there's no hit. Okay, so that's how time works. Uh, distance is exactly as it uh, seems. Uh, I'm actually just going to show you guys. Uh, we made a ping system last Wednesday in the last video. If you guys are interested in that, it'll be in the description down below. But if you'll hit a ping and it'll drop and it'll tell you the distance. So yeah, obviously the distance it's going to tell you is going to be in Unreal Engine units, which is millimeters, uh, 748. But if I put this down, it's seven meters. Okay. In that ping video, it shows you guys how to convert uh, it to meters so that it's accurate, okay? And you guys will learn how to use uh, this ping and make a ping system for your games. The next one we're gonna look at here is location, impact point, normal, and impact normal. These are all vectors. So these are all physical locations in 3D space. Uh, location, it's literally just gonna pump out the actual vector uh, of that hit point, okay? So if I hit this, it's just going to pump out an XYZ in the top left corner of exactly where the line trace hit in the world. This is not exact, by the way, right? So um, if you have like a sphere trace, for example, which is much bigger, then uh, obviously it's not going to be exactly dead center. If you're looking for exactly dead center, you're going to use impact point instead, okay? The impact point will give you the exact position um, in the 3D space that you currently hit with that line trace, okay? All right, the, uh, the other ones are really handy for decals specifically. So we got normal and impact normal. No, they pretty much do the same thing. Impact normal is the more reliable one. It's the normal hit in world space for the object that was hit by the sweep. Okay, if you don't know what a normal is, it's essentially um, the front side of a face or a mesh that Unreal Engine is going to know this is the front side, this is the side we should be rendering. And uh, the back side does not get rendered unless you have um, double-sided geometry turned on. So if you're doing a decal, getting back to the comment here, if you hit a line trace, it's going to find out the direction that it is rendering, basically, or the, or the normal that you just hit. And then you're going to put a decal on there. Okay, uh, we're going to be doing decals uh, in my FPS series um, in uh, not next video, but the video after. So if you guys are interested in uh, learning how to do that, you can make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're going to be doing some sweet things. Uh, okay, so that's the impact normal. Now we're going to get into some a uh, little bit more complicated things here. <clears throat> okay, the next thing is the uh, physical material. Okay, this Saturday, we're actually doing physical materials in our first person shooter uh, series. So if you guys are interested in learning about those, we're gonna learn about different body parts uh, that we can assign our enemies so that when we shoot them, they can do different types of damage or different damage uh, based on what weapon we're using and, and uh, what part of the body we hit, okay? It'll also return back, um, so we have this water material and you can see that when I hit it, it says cube seven water. So it's returning back the material that I hit um, and the green lines there, of course, mean that I did indeed hit something. That's what that means. Okay, so uh, I didn't assign physical materials to any one of these. You can just see it says de default physical material. That's Unreal Engine's, uh, essentially, that's the default. If it doesn't detect a material, it's just going to assign it as the default physical material. Okay, uh, yeah, so join us on Saturday if you want to learn about physical materials. And we're going to turn uh, this guy into uh, something that we can uh, shoot and do different, da different amounts of damage on different body parts. Okay. All right, next up, we have uh, the hit components. So the hit components, uh, a really good example here is this uh, this guy over here. So you could have an actor, which is, you know, our player, or it can be, you know, a house or anything like that. That's, that's one singular actor that you can drag into the world. Uh, but perhaps you want to do different things to different components. So you can see that this one actor is made up of three separate meshes, which is the cube, the cylinder, and the cone. So when I interact with this, it says multi-cube, cube, cube. <laughs> so that means that it's the cube or pardon me the multi-cube actor it is the cube and it's the static mesh cube that's why i had cube cube because it was the actual component up here and then the actual static mesh okay so that's the component that we had and if we do this we can do the cylinder and we can do the cone okay so uh you can hit different components this is really useful for like uh you know, in a first person shooter game, if you're fighting a tank and you want, if you shoot the engine, for example, and you want to detect what component you've hit, you've hit the engine. Now you can disable the engine and maybe the, the tank can't drive anymore, but it can still shoot and do stuff like that, right? So uh, that's what that's pretty handy for. All right, the next one here will be the bone name. So the bone name and the hit bone name are pretty much the same. 
Um, hit bow name again seems to be a little bit more um, reliable. Uh, this is useful for ragdoll stuff. When uh, so again in the FPS um, tutorial series, we're going to be doing this later. We're going to be hitting um, the enemy in whatever arm or leg or head or whatever. And once we uh, get their health down to zero, we're going to get the hit bone name and we're going to add force to that bone. And the ragdoll is going to start from if you shoot him in the hand, it's going to start from the hand and spin him around. Or if it's in the head, he's going to flip his head back. Right. So. And we're by the enemy, and we're going to hit him in the head, and it's going to say head. Okay, it's going to... Uh, now we're doing the hand L, the forearm L. Uh, it didn't hit a bone there, so it's not going to do anything. I said upper arm L. So yeah, basically you can uh, check a bone that you're hitting. So uh, once again, the FPS series, we're going to hit him in the lower arm R. <laughs> so we're going to hit him there, and then we're going to add force there to add, to start the ragdoll from there. Okay. Uh, the bone name and the... Pardon me, yeah, bone name and hit bone do the same thing. So I'm just going to type in... Hit bone and just show you it does the same thing. There you go. Yeah, it does the same thing. Okay, so that is what the uh, bone names do. Okay, uh, the next one's a little bit more complicated. Uh, okay, so the elemental index here, it just says if colliding with a primitive with multiple parts, meaning up here, um, then it will be the index of the part that was hit. Okay, uh, the hit item. Uh, pr uh, primitive specific data recording which item in the primitive was hit. So we're going to do this one for now just so I can show you what that means. Alright, so we'll just go over to the skeletal mesh here. So everything's got a bit of a hierarchical system to it. Alright, so we got Manny here. Um, Manny, if you go to the skeleton up here, Manny's skeleton is a hierarchical system of bones, okay? So the root bone will be number zero in terms of the element index, okay? So that is the the most parent bone of the skeleton, okay? And the farther you go down, the pelvis, the spine, the, the spine too, whatever, the, every little divot you see here is gonna be basically increased by one. So the pelvis is gonna be one, spine one's gonna be two, spine two's gonna be three. Okay, so we're gonna shoot down here. You can see that it's saying zero. We're hitting the root bone right now, okay? So that's the root bone in the skeleton. Then we're gonna go up and you can see it says 13. That's obviously a different bone there. There we go, number one, that's the... Uh, pelvis bone and then we're going to keep going up two that's the spine bone the other spine bone three and then i think four. Oh yeah there's four there so it's the four is the upper bone here and then yeah so you can just see it just keeps going down the hierarchy so this is going to be the specific index uh that you're using uh pretty much you would use this for something similar like hip bone um but you know maybe not something that uh has a skeleton necessarily right so this one's a little bit different um, so this is if colliding with a trimester landscape index of the face that was hit. So um, you could have a landscape that has multiple uh, layers or indexes or, or components, pardon me. So this is if colliding with trimester landscape index of the face that was hit. So um, the um, this is referring to landscapes because uh, landscapes are built with components, which are uh, which is essentially like a gr the grid system um, of this. So that's just going to hit return basically what face was hit on whatever tri mesh or landscape that you're hitting. And then you can do different things with that. Okay. Uh, and finally we got trace start and trace end. This is just pretty self-explanatory. Um, this is the location of the start of your trace. So it'll be your, you know, in this case, it'll be our camera. Okay. We got our camera manager. We're getting the eyes point of view. It's going to be this location right here. That's what it's going to be. Okay, the trace end is going to be literally this location, okay? Um, unless um, we hit something. If we hit something, it's going to be uh, whatever we've hit. That'll be the trace end instead, okay? Um, and that's really useful. We just did that in our um, uh, projectiles video a couple weeks ago where we uh, are using the trace end um, as an option for us to uh, send our bullet to if we don't hit anything. There you have it. Hopefully you guys learned something today. Let me know in the comments down below what you did learn, if you needed clarification on something, or if I screwed something up. Special thanks to my coffee members up there. If you guys want to become a coffee member, you get access to my personal vault of assets, as well as higher tiers, get access to my videos early and project files. If you want to become a coffee member, check out the description below. But if you want to keep learning, there's that video, the ping system that I was talking about that'll utilize a lot of the hit result stuff that we were talking about in this video. Otherwise, keep learning till you game over. Peace.